Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Hello everyone. Today we're diving deep into the fascinating world of fiber optic cables. These marvels of modern engineering are the backbone of our digital world, enabling high-speed internet, clear voice communication, and even the technology behind our streaming services. But have you ever wondered how these cables are made? Let's take a journey through the intricate process of fiber optic cable manufacturing. But first, what is a fiber optic cable? A fiber optic cable is a type of cable that transmits data as pulses of light through strands of glass or plastic fibers. Unlike traditional copper cables, which transmit data as electrical signals, fiber optic cables use light to send information, allowing for faster and more efficient data transfer over long distances. The core of each fiber is surrounded by a cladding that reflects the light back into the core, minimizing signal loss. This technology is widely used in telecommunications, internet connections, and other data communication systems due to its high bandwidth, reliability, and resistance to electromagnetic interference. Now, the production of a fiber optic cable begins with its core material, silica sand. Silica sand is abundant and serves as the primary ingredient for producing glass, which is a key component of fiber optic cables. The first step is to purify the silica sand to remove impurities, ensuring the highest quality glass. This purified sand is then melted at extremely high temperatures, around 1700 degrees Celsius, to form a liquid. This liquid glass is the foundation of the optical fiber. Next, we move on to the creation of the preform, a large cylindrical piece of glass that will eventually be drawn into thin fibers. The preform is made using a process called Modified Chemical Vapor Deposition (MCVD). During MCVD, gases such as silicon tetrachloride and germanium tetrachloride are injected into a hollow glass tube. A torch heats the tube, causing a chemical reaction that deposits layers of glass on the inside of the tube. These layers build up to form the preform, which has a core and cladding with slightly different refractive indices, crucial for guiding light through the fiber. Once the preform is ready, it's time for the drawing process. The preform is placed in a drawing tower, where it's heated to about 2000 degrees Celsius. As the bottom of the preform melts, it forms a molten drop that is pulled downward by gravity. This drop cools and solidifies into a thin, continuous strand of glass fiber. The drawing speed and temperature are carefully controlled to ensure the fiber maintains a consistent diameter, typically around 125 micrometers. After the fiber is drawn, it passes through a series of coating stages. These coatings protect the delicate glass fiber from physical damage and environmental factors. The primary coating is a soft UV-cured polymer that cushions the fiber. This is followed by a secondary, harder coating that provides additional protection. Both coatings are applied in a single, continuous process and cured using ultraviolet light. The coated fiber is then wound onto large spools for testing and further processing. Rigorous testing ensures that the fiber meets all necessary specifications for strength, flexibility, and optical performance. This includes testing for tensile strength, attenuation, and the ability to transmit light over long distances without significant loss. Once the fiber has passed all quality checks, it's time to bundle it into cables. This involves combining multiple fibers, sometimes up to several hundred, into a single cable. The fibers are organized into loose tubes or ribbons, depending on the cable design. These tubes are then surrounded by additional protective layers, including water blocking materials, strength members made of materials like aramid yarn or steel, and an outer jacket made of durable plastic. Each layer is designed to protect the fibers from environmental hazards like moisture, physical stress, and temperature fluctuations. 
The final step is the installation of the fiber optic cables. These cables are deployed in a variety of environments, from underground conduits to aerial installations on utility poles. Installation requires careful handling to avoid bending the cables too sharply, which can damage the fibers inside. Once installed, the cables are spliced together to create a continuous optical path, allowing data to travel across vast distances at incredible speeds. And there you have it. From raw silica sand to high-tech communication highways, the process of making fiber optic cables is a testament to human ingenuity and precision engineering. Fiber optic technology has revolutionized the way we communicate, providing the backbone for the internet, phone lines, and even cable television. Next time you browse the internet or make a phone call, remember the incredible journey that light travels through these tiny glass fibers to connect us all. It's amazing to think that something as simple as glass can be transformed into the high-speed data highways that keep our world connected. As we continue to innovate and improve upon this technology, the possibilities are endless. Who knows what advancements we'll see in the next decade? Perhaps even faster internet speeds, more reliable connections, and even new applications we can't yet imagine. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the creation of fiber optic cables. We always appreciate your support and look forward to bringing you more content that sparks curiosity and wonder. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.